everyone. I am so excited today because I am speaking with author James Marker and this is his newest book. One thing about James is you know you're going to get a good cover. Okay. I've been waiting to read this book. I couldn't wait. What blooms from dust. I wanted to cry. This book was so good. Not because of what it said in it, but like halfway through I teared up because I was like, James, this is is brilliant. You are brilliant. Oh my God. I cannot wait to talk to him about this, but, um, I don't know if I'm going to be giving away this copy because as you can see, it's a proof copy. I will see what he has and who knows, I'll let him decide. But anyway, everyone here is James. Hi everyone, I am so excited today because I am speaking with author James Marker, and this is the second time we're talking, and we're, today we're going to be talking about his newest book called What Blooms from Dust, coming out today, and I will have the link to it uh, to Amazon so you can order it, and James, I am so happy that I read this book. I, I can't even tell you. What an amazing book. Well, thank you. I appreciate you reading it, and this is, this, I think, the second time we've talked in just a few months because my other one yes. came out in January. <laughs> yes. And, you know, most of the time I've already, you know, I do my stories on Instagram and I've already said this, so, you know, whatever, everybody's seeing this today, but, you know, a lot of times I cry from the story when I'm reading a book and this, like, I, when I was reading this book, I wanted to cry because the writing was so brilliant. I, well, as I'm you. reading it, I'm like, oh my gosh, James, you are brilliant. This is such, your writing is so good. It makes me so happy as a reader to read it. Well, thank you. I actually got a, a copy of the book, my first copy, a couple of days ago, and and a little note from my editor that said that she cries every time she reads it, and can't. And she said she can't wait for other people to read it and cry. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one because a lot of times I can go on like comments and see if I am the only person that has that re has a reaction. But right. because this book's just coming out, I can't do that yet. But yeah, I mean. I, and I was like, I promised myself, before I talk to an author like you, I make a promise to myself to not say a thousand times how much I love the book. Mm -hmm. So, like, I made that promise before we <laughs> because it gets annoying, I think. And I'm like, don't do it. Don't tell him a thousand times. And, you know, a hundred is, you know, sufficient. You don't have to keep saying it. But <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's so true. And then I don't know what else to say. But first of all, everybody is looking at the cover as we're speaking. And, you know, we come to expect great covers from you. And this one does mm -hmm. not disappoint. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, the last one, you know, was so amazing. And then this one in such a different way. I mean, right. I don't know who does your covers, but <laughs> you well, are Thomas so Nelson fun. does Harper Collins, <laughs> Thomas Nelson. They, I wish I could take credit for the covers, but I have not, nothing to do with them. <laughs> but I will wow. say that they, I, I love the covers so far and they, from book to book, um, they all have kind of a, uh, a theme, yeah. you know, going, going through them. Um, it, it's pretty unique. Yeah, it is very unique because it is, as much as they are the same, they're different. Right. You know, like with different color schemes, but they do have like that same feel to them, which yeah. I really love when an author does that, you know, that it's the same kind of, I don't know, you know, when I got done with this book, I looked at it again and I was, I got so much more out of the cover and I love mm -hmm. that. You know, right. when it's like when the when the person who designs this, like you can tell what they put into it and you're like, right. Oh my gosh, now I see it. Now I see what they're doing, you know. So with the roses you, and the typewriter right. and you know. And usually when you get a cover you and you first see it, um you know, you either love it, like it, whatever. Um, all the covers so far I've loved, but there's always been maybe one minor tweak that I've mentioned. Um, but when I saw what blooms from dust the cover i just looked at it and said done, <laughs> done. that's perfect uh, and then uh, you know i always wondered like this, with this title um because your titles are awesome too okay like Thank they're you. not you know they're not just you can't tell what it's going to be about and then you go back and you're like okay what blooms from dust of course of course mm -hmm. that's the title you know <laughs> it makes so i much can't sense. take credit for that either un unfortunately now the angel no. share I have four books out. Well, that one, What Blooms from Dust, I will have four books out. Um, right. And the only one 
that I've kept, they, I've been able to keep my title was the Angel Share. Um, my original title for What Blooms from Dust was Red Roses from Nowhere. No, um, which I do but, like too. I do yeah. like that. And a lot of times I'll just throw a title on a book just so it has one. Um, right. Knowing that it's probably going to be changed, but the you know, but the the publisher came up with what blooms from dust, and I haven't heard anyone who. I mean, I think everyone likes it. I like it. Oh, uh, I love. But it. I think it's it's very. Uh, you read it and you think, and you want to know more. Oh yeah, oh definitely. And like I said, as I'm reading this story, um, you know, we'll go into uh, a little bit. Is that it? You know, it takes place during the Dust Bowl in mm-hmm. 1935. I didn't know that much about it. Now, you live in Kentucky. You live more towards the middle, you know, right. middle part of the country than I do, So <laughs> since I'm in Pennsylvania. But, you know, there's so little that I knew about it. It's like if somebody would have said, did you ever hear of I would have been like, sure, I've heard of it, you know, mm-hmm. like, and that's it. Like, I heard of it, and then, but I had no idea exactly what happened. And as I'm reading the story, and, you know, these dust storms are happening inside me. I'm like, not another one. No, not another right. one. Like, I didn't realize that it wasn't an event like one. No, it was right. so many. And that, that was a little bit of a difficulty in writing it, that I didn't want the whole book to be, you know, storm after storm. Um, but that's, you know, the, I think I read at one point there was a storm like, 40 something days in a row at a certain part. Um, right. So I wanted to portray that. Um, I guess the biggest storm in my book was the Black Sunday storm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know. I, I did a little bit of research during the Angel Share because I mentioned the Dust Bowl. Um, mm-hmm. In that little bit of research, I, I knew then, I said, I want to write a book that happened during the Dust Bowl. Um, so that's when that this story kind of started formulating a little bit, and you know, just being influenced a little bit by uh, Steinbeck and the Grapes of Wrath, reading that mm-hmm. when I was in high, in high school, the story of a family moving away from the Dust Bowl. I wanted to do something about a family who stayed. And it is pretty incredible that there were families that stayed. Is what yeah. I, you know, and I went to look it up because I was just like, really, people stayed? I, I couldn't believe yeah. it. You know, yeah, and a lot of it was stu- you know, a lot of it was stubbornness, um a lot of it was you know hearing the horror stories of the they called them the exodusters of the people who tried to leave and finding out that it wasn't any better, and they weren't wanted anywhere else um mm. and just you know that's where you know people had they they went there in the southern plains and they got rich um. And then they got poor. <laughs> right. Um, and, the, and it was one of those things where I guess a lot of them still ha- held on to that hope and faith that that would come back. Um, but it was just a devastating time in history and just a fascinating time in history that I don't think a lot of people know about. Um, right. And I like that. to like to do that sometimes and take, take a part of history, um, a little known part that's kind of dark and and try to find some kind of beauty beneath it all. Yeah. When did they stop? Well, um, I believe the the whole, I guess the earth started peeling off around 1932, 33. And I I think it went to the late. uh, So it wasn't like a couple year thing. It was like an eight year or more span of, drought and very little rain um and they tore up the land so much planting all that wheat in the 20s that once it started peeling up there wasn't anything to hold it down um but just the description of some of those storms <laughs> just oh the size God. of them was just right blew my, blew my mind yeah i went back and looked at some pictures just because mm-hmm. i was curious and i was like you see that coming towards you i mean yeah it, you know, it, it's kind of like a tornado, but not, but not because I mean, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't even imagine. You know, when right. they saw, when they would look and see what was going to come towards mm-hmm. them, and you know, it made me realize, like in your description in your book of like why they ran and why they, you know, because yeah. you could die. I mean, you oh, could, yeah. you know, you, you could, could suffocate, just, get lost yeah. out in it. 
I mean, nowadays we might sit at a Little League baseball game and the uh, the wind stirs up some of the dust in the infield and we're thinking, this is terrible. <laughs> but these <laughs> these uh, dusters that went through in the dust bowl, where you, they were sometimes so black you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Um, I mean, this horrifying. And I was trying to think of the suffocating thing because I was like, okay, wind, I guess it's because what happens is all that dirt, right? Mm-hmm. And then you inhale all the dirt, I guess. Right. If you're yeah. stuck in it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And you know what? It's back in the, you know, like we try to imagine that today. Okay. But my um, my daughter had lived in Dallas for a while. And when they would have a tornado warning, like sirens go off and, you know, right. everybody takes cover. They got notifications on their phone. That's all, mm-hmm. You know, like, you know, we're talking the 1930s. There is no warning. There is right. no, you know, like today might be the day or, you know, things aren't looking good today. So everybody right. be careful. <laughs> Like no, they just they did they had no notice whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And that's why I wrote that scene, um, that the Black Sunday storm where they were all out and the weather was beautiful and they were having a rabbit drive and mm-hmm. and all of a sudden here it comes. And it was just a mad dash to get back home before before it hit. Yeah. Well I'm gonna let everybody, because I don't want to give away too much, so I'm gonna let you tell everybody the story. Because it is such an amazing story. Your stories are always so good. But I'll let you describe to everybody, you know, what you want them to know, <laughs> basically. Uh, well, but basically, the setting is uh, 1935 in the heart of the Dust Bowl. Um, I created a fictional town called uh, Nowhere, Oklahoma. Um, I guess the very beginning of the book happens 15 years before most of the book is where the town founders um, get bamboozled. They're going out to the Southern Plains to this uh, town that they think is called Majestic with pictures of paved roads and beautiful buildings. And, and when they get out there, they just, they, they learned that they spent their money on a scam and all there was, was fields uh, of grass. And, um, but they ended up staying there and the wife says we're in the middle of nowhere. So that's what they called the town. Um, so nowhere, Oklahoma. And there's a, set of twins in the book uh jeremiah and josiah goodbye and jeremiah's on death row he's known as the coin flip killer um for murder you know four murders that he uh may or may not have committed and he um there's a little bit of a a chance at the beginning where a tornado hits the uh um prison right when he gets in to the electric chair and he walks out a free man a wanted man and returns to his hometown of nowhere um, where he's not exactly wanted anymore. Um, But on the way he picks up a, I guess he buys a kid who's for sale, um, (laughs) who is a very unique um, boy and uh, with a typewriter and things start happening in nowhere when the black Sunday storm hits, the dust may not just only be dust, Right, but at the risk just, of giving away too too much, right. um, uh-huh. thing, a lot of things happen. <laughs> yeah, there we go. A lot. That's why we let the author do it because I'm afraid that I'm going to give away too much, and I want everybody to read this book the way I got to read the book and let it unfold the way it did. But what I love about your books is always there's that underlying theme of magic, mm-hmm. and just like with the coin toss, like how did you come up with that? That's what I kept thinking throughout the whole book. How did James do that? How did he come up yeah. with this? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, I, I don't know. At first, I um, imagine him getting up. Uh, sometimes you just, and you vision, it's a, a vision, so a scene in the book. I imagine him walking out of uh, jail, a free man, but still wanted, and standing at a crossroads. Um, mm. whether to go back to nowhere or head in a different direction. And he gets a coin out and just flips it. Um, and then I started thinking, maybe that's what he does. That's his thing. And it's always been his oh. thing. And then or and then I thought, okay, he's the coin flip killer. And that's where it kind of goes from there. Yeah. I, I, it's just, you know, and I don't want to give it away, but there is lots of themes of, of like – I don't know that I want to say magic, but it, it you know, like unknown and just yeah. magical. How about magical? More like, like that. Magic, magical realism. Yes. And, and I not, love that. And it's not overwhelming. 
Uh, no. Because then no. you would lend more into the fantasy. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it's just stuff that, um, you know, I, I like to do that because there's some things happen in the in the world where that don't really have an explanation, and and you think, where, how is that happening? And um, so I like to have a little bit of magical realism in in my stories, even if it is, is mixed with historical fiction. Um, oh, I, I love that you do that. First of all, it, allow, never it allows me to thing like it. Well, thank you. It allows <laughs> me to throw a little. Because I, li- I love history, I like writing historical fiction, but it allows me to throw a little bit of Stephen King in there. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, but not, but not that way, but not too much. Right. You know? Just a right. hint. Just a, you know? just a hint. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what I love about it when I'm reading it. And, you know, before we talk about your next book, because I do see that there is a next one, um, yeah. I <laughs> I love the way you come up with names. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to tell us too much about it because, like I said, I want people to read. But I can tell the work, like, that you put. There are some books I read, and I'm like, they didn't put that much work into the names. I can tell. Right. You know, it's right. just kind of like going through a name book or whatever and picking names that are, look good. But with mm-hmm. your names, they're so picked out and yeah. so well thought out. I just love that. So I had to tell you that. Well, I'm big on names, and sometimes I'll – you know, just so I'm not sitting at my computer for 10 hours thinking of a name, I'll just give them a name. And when something, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. you need to know the character more before you can figure out what his or her name needs right. to be. Um, in the case of Goodbye, I think I was doing some research uh, or maybe reading the book. I think it was Timothy Egan, the, the one he wrote about the Dust Bowl, which is fascinating. I think there was a real-life person whose last name was Goodnight. Mm-hmm. Um so I just thought a goodbye, and then I thought I was thinking syllables, mm-hmm. uh, and how many syllables would something unique to go with goodbye? And it, it, I just came down to uh, Jeremiah, um, and the, you know, not, and not just the main characters. I like to take my time with 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 some of the other ones too, um, like the one De- I think it was Deacon Sipes, mm-hmm. kind of kind of a kind of a bad guy, I guess, in the book. Um, but, you know, different things like that. And can I tell well, a quick, can... st- quick story? Because mm-hmm. uh, you're just talking about diff- weird um, r- magical realism type things. This is very strange. You, you know, the Anthony Bourdain passed away. Yeah. Did, you, did you read about that? I, I just, before we got on, I went on to okay. the and saw it, yeah. Parent, parent suicide, but... Um, and I didn't watch his show all the time, but I would watch it occasionally. And I was always fascinated by him um, and his, you know, meeting people in other countries. And I always thought he would be a neat person to have a sit down, have a beer with and eat. Um, I had a weird dream last night that I was with my wife and friends and we were some remote place out of country and we ran into him and we <gasps> got our and we got pictures taken um, with him. And then I woke up. And this morning to hear that he passed away, it was so bizarre. Wow. And that's the type of stuff that that's not always explained, you know. Um, yeah, how do you explain that? Yeah. You know, and I've never dreamt of him before. And I, I, had, <laughs> I, 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 I hadn't seen his show in months. Um, very, just weird. That is, that is. Well, this week has been, you know, rough with Mm -hmm. suicides and, you know, and I just saw it when I, right before I went on Instagram and I, I just saw that and I was like, wow. Okay. You know, and you know, he, he, you just don't know because he seemed like, yeah, I don't know. You just can't tell. And Mm -hmm. so I, it was, but that is, that is really weird. So that must've been, when you saw that this morning, you must've been like, whoa. I didn't know what to think. Right. Because I thought it was weird that I, he was in my dream anyways. Right. Um, you're like, what but, was he doing there? You know? Yeah, but, I mean, well, it made a little sense. We were traveling and trying different food in another country, and they would, you right. know, but it's just weird. Yeah, that is, and that's what I was, you know, saying about your books, though. If they do have that element, it isn't like, you know, we have weird things that happen to us all the time, mm-hmm. and you know, you you think, oh, that's weird. I just read that. Oh, that, you know, how did that happen? How did that, you know, the, we call them coincidences or whatever you right. want to call them, but. You know, sometimes like with that, that it's like a coincidence. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. You know, like yeah. I don't know. 
I, but I think, but I, well, what I do think is that there's a story in there. So, you know, yeah. you write that down somewhere. And you know, yeah. I, think, <laughs> I think that's definitely a story to be right. told. And, you know, when I saw that your next book isn't coming out until March, I got very sad because, yeah. I, you know, I got to read two of your books in a very short amount of time. And, right. and that made me very happy. And now I have to wait a longer and, you know, I guess that's just the way it is in the book world. But not a, you know, not a full year, though. Not a full year, which is good. <laughs> not a full year. And the title, Midnight at the Tuscany Hotel. So what, yes. you, what can you tell us about it? Um, well, I have a cover. That <laughs> That's <I>, good. <laughs> I, I can't reveal until after What Blooms from Dust comes out. Uh, okay. So I don't start confusing people. People. Um, absolutely. But that takes place right after World War II um, in a made up town in Southern California called Gandhi. Um, there's a, the father in the story, um, was a sculptor who, you know, was known around the world for his sculptures and almost considered himself a God. Um, but he met his wife, um, Magdalena in, in, uh, Florence and, there's uh they there's something to where they have to escape Florence. This is in the late eighteen hundreds. And but he decides to build a hotel in Southern California and calls it the Tuscany Hotel. So oh. since he had to he and his wife had to escape Tuscany, um, so he decides to kind of bring it to her. And and this hotel is very unique. It's it's um shaped in a perfect square with a beautiful mosaic fountain in the middle of it. Um, but every room is decorated by replicas of famous paintings and artists travel from across the country and the world to um, put their touch on the rooms, whether it's a fresco or a statue and they, uh, um, different, you know, musicians and actors, they all come to the Tuscany hotel in the early 1900s and the roaring twenties to perform their crafts because it's, it's like uh, a muse, um, the hotel is. Um, but for reasons I can't explain yet or can't give away, the hotel um, goes out of business and no one's there anymore. Um, but the son, who was in World War II, um, comes home a little uh, battered from the war um, to a one-year-old son or two-year-old son who doesn't know who he is. Um, and says, you know, you're not my father because he doesn't remember who he is. And then he comes home to his dad who has Alzheimer's now and doesn't know who he is. Um, but it ends up something happens and the sculpting father ends up back at the hotel because the fountain in the middle has suddenly started running again in the water and he drinks from the water and it, it has a curing effect for his Alzheimer's. His memory comes back. Um, and then people from around the country start arriving to the hotel and they drink from, with Alzheimer's and they drink from the water and their memory starts to come back. Oh. And, and, and soon the hotel is full of elderly. Um, but of course there's always a twist. There's, um, the, you know, not everything is what it seems in drinking the water. There, there's a downside to it too. Um, but I, uh, so that's basically it. It's kind of a, a memory memory hotel, and it gets into the ancient gods and the Greek gods and uh, Renaissance art. Um, so it's got a lot of a lot of different themes going on. But I think it's going to be a good one. I can't wait. I can't believe I have to wait long, but you you will get me a copy. Like a, yeah, I have, right? as soon as I get <laughs> a copy, I'll send it. I'll send it to you, so you won't have to wait till next March. Oh, good. I'm so happy about that. But everyone is looking at that's the you know at the cover of the book, and I just want everyone to know that today I will be giving the copy that I have away on Instagram, on my Instagram account. So you can go mm -hmm. there and you can get that and you can go on here, watch the video. The book does release today and the, all the links are below uh, to everything, your website and every social media you are, they'll be able to find you. And okay. I am so, so happy that I know you, James, 
Okay. Well, so <laughs> Thank <happy>. you. <laughs> I'm happy that someone's reading my books. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get this out there. There will be a okay. lot of people reading this book because it is amazing, and um, I can't wait to read the next. So thank you so much for talking with me, and we will talk again. Well, of course. Okay. <laughs> I'm, lo- I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to it. That was the first mm-hmm. time I'd, I'd explained Midnight in the Tuscan Hotel to anyone. So hopefully, I didn't, hopefully I didn't go on too long. <laughs> no, I, I love hearing about it, so I, I can't wait already. So um, have a great day, and we will talk to you soon, James. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Thank you for listening, everyone, and look at here it is. Here's the book I'm giving away. And in case I didn't say it enough, you need to read this book. Okay. If you have only one book to pick this week, it's this one. It is so good. Oh my God. He is amazing. I am so happy that I know him. Um, Anyway, all the links will be listed below. James knows how much I love him and how much I love his writing. I have to wait a little bit till his next book, but not quite a year. So I'll be okay. But guys, read this book. Okay. Thanks. Bye.